Reliability at Yorkville Sound is very core to what we do. It's one of, if not the most important design goal. The history of uh, reliability testing at Yorkville is pretty, uh, pretty interesting, going back to the days where Pete Trainer used to throw guitar amps off the roof of buildings. Uh, that's a pretty famous story. The reputation for being so reliable and, and making products that are so reliable has stemmed from their extensive use in rental departments. Uh, as we all know, rental departments are brutal on equipment and loudspeakers are no different. So we've been forced to make products that are exceptionally well designed as far as reliability and taking abuse. In a rental department, we have to have gear that works each and every time. It can't be a failure rate, it has to be zero. Every Thursday, Friday, it's the weekend, and our rental department will have everybody from DJs to live bands, uh, a lot of people get married on weekends, uh, all kinds of functions. And Yorkville gear covers all of that. Our customers know that week after week, weekend after weekend, they're gonna come in, they're gonna get their speakers, they're gonna do their gig, and it's all gonna work fine. Anything that we put in the torture chamber has to survive 16 and a half days or 400 hours of non-stop high output use where the woofer is moving the most it can possibly move and come out without any kind of failure modes at all. So the long-term acoustic test, uh, really what it's, what it's meant to catch is uh, any user, if they were to take a unit out in the field and do terrible things with it and have uh, super bass heavy material into limiting for months on end, it's not going to fail. If it passes this test, they will not have a problem. We've seen all kinds of uh, failure modes, uh, stuff catching on fire and blowing up, and, and that's the stuff you want to find. You want to find that before the customer does and then correct it. So you're looking for that kind of stuff. You're actually trying to find the breakpoint of the device that you're testing. We have put in some non-Yorkville, uh, pretty popular speakers, well-known speakers uh, through the bunker test and they did not fare very well. So the overview of the drop test is people drop stuff all the time. So it, we, we drop it in all different orientations, uh, worst case scenario multiple times from different heights and, and we're trying to break it. What we're looking for are any you know, large impact uh, kind of failure. When we do drop testing, we're looking for weak points in the cabinet the electronics, the speaker components themselves. We're trying to find out uh, you know, anything that will break when it gets dropped or dropped repeatedly. And uh, we identify those weak points and we fix them. When speakers are in a gig, sometimes uh, it might be a, a large party, a wedding, and accidents do happen. People you know, trip over the stands and knock the speakers over and coming from six foot off the ground, hitting, hitting the floor and putting them back up and they still keep working is, is pretty impressive. We do these pull tests because this is related to safety uh, as well as reliability, but these products must meet a safety standard that is non-negotiable. They must pass these. If we have a new handle design or a new way of, of uh, joining two wood pieces, we have to test that to make sure it's reliable. So really, we do the pull test to make sure your handles will not fall off. So if you want to design a reliable product, it's about the big picture in the whole system, but really it's actually down to the fine details as well. That's really more of what the sine wave vibration test is all about. So we apply random noise as a stimulus and we measure how much each component is moving. And this really tells us what the resonant frequency of the individual component is. We use that information to do a second part of the test on the sine wave vibration table at these individual frequencies. So really this is the worst possible test that you could have for each individual component. Yeah, so the, the number of reliability tests we have is, is huge, and it is dependent on the particular product that we're designing. But I mean, there's a whole suite of mechanical 
tests, there's a suite of electronics tests, there's abnormal testing, there's firmware testing, like the list goes on. Like all together, you're looking at over 100 tests for sure. The Yorkville standard for reliability is a less than 1% failure rate. And that's Yorkville standard. It's not the industry standard. That's a standard that we've placed upon ourselves. It has to be reliable. There's, there's no question that Yorkville, every time we send it out, it's going to work. As the designer of these products, the, the key features that they must be are reliable, easy to use, and sound great.